Hi, Paul Slack. It's Good News Planet. I'm speaking to Jack Love. Hi, Jack. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, good. You're the uh, chair, I believe, in the gala that's coming up here for the Israel Defense Forces National New York Gala 2011. Uh, I'm a former correct? president of the organization. Okay. And I'm close, close with, it, with the cause. It's close to my heart. It's to very many people. Aha. Uh-huh. How did you get involved? Uh, I've been here for quite a few years, and I was looking to get involved with some good cause, and all of a sudden uh, I moved uh, to a new neighborhood in Livingston, New Jersey, where friends of mine told me that there is some kind of a gathering that relates to the friends of the IDF, and I was very surprised because I never heard of this organization before. I went to it, and it took my heart, and I got involved very heavily, and within a couple of years I ran the organization. Okay. The IDF is what? Colors. Israel Defense Forces, mm-hmm. or Tzahal in Hebrew, well known to almost everyone in Israel and outside of it. It's the defending force of the State of Israel, of which without it, the State of Israel does not exist for 10 minutes. Were you, uh, you were born where? I was born in Jerusalem on the day Israel was born as a country in 1948. Wow. I served in the military from 1967 to 1970, I'm a young officer. I used to be a young officer during my young years, mm-hmm. and and I am very familiar with all of the ins and out of the life in Israel, and especially the importance of its uh, military forces. The importance of the military forces is why? Because young people in their best ages of high, after high school, 18 years old are being required to give up three years of their life, three years for men and two years for women, instead of going to uh, college and universities and have fun all over the world. They come and they put their life on the line in order to defend the country that is in a very hostile surroundings, incredible uh, hostile environment. And unless they do it, what happened a few days ago in Israel will happen to every single Israeli. They just want to kill them. Is there a way we can get peace there, if you don't mind me asking? If we get what? Peace. Are we, is there a way we can have peace in that, that part of the world? It's a complex issue. It's not a very simple answer to it. I believe so ultimately because uh, it's the ultimate desire. of Most people, I believe, are good people. Unfortunately, most of the 23 Arab countries surrounding uh, Israel and beyond if there is a problem of no bread in Morocco, it's the fault of Israel because it builds settlement. If, if there is some uprising in Algeria or in Iran, it's because Israel is uh, existing and so forth. Once the corrupt regime of all those countries will be replaced in a process that just begun and that there will be certain level of reasonable democracy, and they would be fortunate to recognize... <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I'll be fortunate to recognize the benefits that Israel had brought onto the region and the world at large. Then there will be uh, prospects for peace. Until then, I think the, the notion of peace ought to be put aside, and they should be talking about coexistence. Israel signed a peace agreement with Egypt in 1979. There is no peace between Israel and Egypt. There is a coexistence. There is hostility. There is unpleasant feeling of Israelis going to Egypt. Nevertheless. It's coexisting, there is no war, and that's what should be between Israel and its immediate neighbors. And then a peace is a process of generations, one, two, three generations, and then there will be a, a nice coexistence, hopefully. Okay, let's, uh, uh, let, let, let's pray on that. <laughs> There's no doubt okay. about it. Baruch Hashem, I think they say. Um, when, uh, when, when this organization here in America was formed, the... Uh, the Friends of IDF. Uh, right. How did it? How did it start? It was initiative by a gentleman named Mr. Klein. Uh, of uh, may he rest in peace. He was a Holocaust survivor. He called a bunch of his friends. They got together in the Pierre Hotel in New York about uh, 25 years ago, and they said that the, those young men and women who are defending our honor and and our country, as they said should know that they are not alone. And that was the motto. And they began very modestly by raising a little bit of money, approaching the Israeli consulate and saying, what can we do for the soldiers? It turned out that from its uh, uh, legal prospect, 
the friends of the IDF is limited by its ability to only care for the well-being of the soldiers. They cannot use the funds for any ammunition or anything hostile, only for the welfare and the well-being of the individuals in the Israeli military, orphans, widows, and so forth. And that's precisely what the organization has been doing. It has been very fortunate in the terms that I was there. I expanded it and brought many, many Israelis into the circle of being aware of it, just like myself, and learning the notion of giving back to society. And in the term that I was running the organization, during the three years, we managed to bring the organization for $3 million a year of donation to over 20, and now it is well over 50. Wow. Congratulations. I'm looking at your website, uh, the Friends of Israel Defense Forces, and uh, uh, their success is our future. Uh, you make a direct impact. So uh, give the soldiers a moment to put the front line behind them. Uh, uh, annual leadership mission returns from Israel. So in essence, a lot is going on that you are all you know, instrumental in making happen. Yes, we try. We, we implemented several very important programs. We gave them a good title. Nevertheless, there is a meaning behind this title. One of them is called Dignity, where we basically tell the soldier who volunteered to serve in Israel, some of them are your neighbors from New York and Canada and South America and so forth, you're not alone, we'll be there for you. So rather than have not having a family, when he comes on the weekend, he finds himself in a nice little apartment, fully equipped and so forth, we take care of all of that, uh, that Dignity program. And it's way beyond this brief description. Nevertheless, that's the idea behind Dignity. Another beautiful program is called uh, Legacy, where we tell the uh, bereaved family, you're not alone, and the young kid who lost their father, we take care of them, we celebrate with them their bar mitzvah, we bring them to America for summer camp, we help them to feel that as, as important as they would have been had there been a parent out there, a father out there. The most important program in the element of the soldiers is a program called Impact. We impact their life, whereby we tell them, if you, at the end of your service, wish to go into an academic institution and do not have the resources to do so, we will pay for you we, if you qualify. And we, right now, <laughs> pardon me, <clears throat> we have thousands of soldiers graduated already we do not take anyone to the program unless we have the funds committed and in the bank account. We give a single soldier to a tune of $16,000 for four years academic scholarship, $4,000 a year. All they have to do is just study. We don't care what. You can become a professor, a doctor, an architect, or a plumber. It doesn't matter. We want to give you a tool to go about your life as a thank you for your willingness to put your life on the line for the state of Israel and for the Jewish people. That's really beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. The how does I see sign up here on your web? Join the circle of friends. Um, how does somebody they, they sign up? They can make some kind of a donation. How does and you don't really. It's not, it's not donation dependent. You can just call in, participate in a meeting, learn about it. Our experience shows that anyone who learns of the organization's activity wishes to be part of it in no time. And then the kids can uh, participate as well. There's a young leadership group. We don't care if it's $18, or $18,000, or $18 million. We want you to be part of the support of the soldiers of the IDF, of the Israel Defense Forces, because they keep our dignity alive. I don't have to tell you and myself and many others, we know what it is when there, were, there was no Israel, what the Jewish people were life like, and what they are now with the incredible accomplishments that Israel has brought onto the world thanks to the protections of the IDF. My number one song on the piano is called Exodus. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you have a coming event, a gala dinner. Uh, what's yes, gonna it's a very big event. It's the biggest annual event. It's one of the hottest uh, charity nights in New York. Thirteen to 1,400 people fill the world of Astoria and compete with each other. Sometime at these nights, we raise as much as $20 million a night. We have some fabulous donors coming from as far as Los Angeles, Mr. Chaim Saban, 
Arthur Stark, who is the chairman of the organization right now. He's the chairman also of Bed Bath and & Beyond, and he's uh, at, the head of the, at the helm of the organization. Neely Falik from Florida is the president. She's an amazing woman. Larry Hochberg used to be the chairman. All these people and many, many others, each one gets up and say whatever the amount that he wishes sometime. The young generation gets involved. Like my children adopted some soldiers years ago, and they felt wonderful about it. I remember <coughs> that. I was there. The hottest tickets in New York. I was, I was there. How the young, the younger, are all part your young leadership. We've gone to quite a few of the young leadership events right, as well. Right. And boy, is and I, I do have to mention the name of Benny Shaptai, who has been running it for many, many years, and he's doing an amazing job. He's the, the night chairman and the host and the uh, spokesperson for everybody, and he is doing an amazing job for very many years, and God bless his heart, may he continue to do it for many years. He comes from the watches industry, and he brings his own industry along, and they are very generous as well, and not only. I recollect also that you had literally had uh, IDF soldiers there. Every year, we bring, first of all, we bring a band, the military band, and we bring a soldier who sits with the people, who intermingle, who tell their story. Every once in a while there is a case that somebody gets up and talks. Either he was in, involved in a certain heroism act or was a bereaved family and so forth. We try to pass the story of the soldiers to the people who then we ask them to expand further into their communities. Friends of the IDF is involved in 11 communities across the U.S. from Miami, Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, New York, and so forth. And we're expanding. We try to expand it into as many people as possible. You know, many, many years ago, uh, the Jewish people suffered enormous consequences of being alone. We want them to know they're not alone anymore. Golda Meir, when she was prime minister, she was asked us, what is this thing I was following the Six Days War? that makes every Israeli soldier to be willing to fight so hard. She says each one of those young men and women carry 3,000 years of Jewish history on their young shoulders. And that's really true. That's exactly what uh, they're carrying. And the 18, 20 years old of Israeli descent has an incredible load upon his little shoulders in such a young age. They lead people into battle. They ba battle, you say and they have to uh, confront extremely tough situation at the time that their uh, counterpart in America goes to the Bahamas for spring break. I've interviewed uh, uh, people, young soldiers that joined uh, from Brooklyn and yes. from Moscow. <laughs> yes. Right? Amazing. I mean, the, the, our armed services are, are open. Amazing. And those who come from far away, we help them with this dignity program. And we have a spirit program that helps the entire group of soldiers. We make a fun day for them. We spend money for them to go for a week uh, vacation. Uh, there's the entire group. And, and we just try to cover all the social need and elements of a three years life of a soldier in a tough environment like the military. Okay, Jack, last question then. Good news for you is what? Good news for me will be signing coexistence with all of Israel's Arab neighbors one day. Okay. Thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, hopefully as very soon as possible. Uh, that's beautifully stated. Thank you so much for sharing with us, and uh, we look forward to your, your gala event. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.